story of the gramophone starts with Thomas Edison, wizard of inventors, and his famous workshop. In 1877, Edison completed an invention which spoke for itself. And that's how the noise racket began. have had some time on his hands when he made this sort of thing possible. Oh, now, repeat what Mr. Edison first said into the phonograph. Hello, hello, hello. Mary had a little lamb. It's sleek. Just white as snow. And everywhere where Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. Ha, 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 ha. Some of the early machines were very crude. This is a Berliner horn type that first saw the light of day in 1870. These are the earpieces. That bomb-shaped thing in the middle is the distribution center, and this the intricate machinery for sharpening the needles. An Edison machine, hand-worked and fitted with governors. Another old vintage horn and cylinder model, driven by clockwork. Pate came along with a machine that employed a sapphire needle. A weight propelled yet another type of early sound reproducing machine. And with this one, small wax cylinder records were used. The original sound box, paper and pin. These diagrams will show how the sound is picked up and distributed. The old Hill and Dale groove, which is now being revived. The present day system, with a lateral or sideways movement. A typical sound box and record of today. The movement of the needle on the record causes sound waves, which are amplified in the tone arm. After going round and around, they come out here. Today, as a result, gramophone music encompasses the world, and even the South Sea Islanders aren't immune. You see how it gets them. In the harem, the waves have a soothing influence on the wives, which perhaps is just as well, and they even penetrate the Arctic. And the only needle that matters to a pretty sunbather is a gramophone needle. Yes, like airplanes, gramophones have made great strides. And some cynics say that all they both need now is a good silencer.